all about thalamid or thalidomide. Thalidomide, um, it is uh, sold under the trade name Thalomid in the United States. It's an oral drug and it was approved by the FDA uh, for use in multiple myeloma patients in about 2006 and uh, it was approved in combination with dexamethasone. Now we have more potent imates, so thalidomide is not used a lot in the United States in uh, frontline setting. Uh, patients uh, who have relapsed and refractory disease, they do receive thalidomide uh, sometimes. Uh, it is used in combination, um, especially in my practice, it, I use it in combination with melphalan and pernison. This combination, which is called MPT, is active in relapsed refractory patients. Thalidomide can be used in combination with daratumumab, botizumab, and dexamethasone. The following combinations are the National Comprehensive Cancer Networks, or NCCN, for version 4.2021, indications for thalamid. Thalamid can be used as primary therapy for transplant-eligible patients in the following circumstances. Thalamid can also be used as therapy for previously treated myeloma in these circumstances. What is the dose of thalamid? The dose is 200 milligrams every day, and the dose is modified based on patient's tolerance and side effect profile. It is important to take thalamid at about the same time each day. Swallow the capsule whole. Do not open, break apart, or chew your capsules. Thalamin may be taken with or without food. If you miss a dose, take it as soon as you remember it, if it has been less than 12 hours since your regularly scheduled time. If it has been more than 12 hours, then skip the missed dose. Never take two doses at the same time. If you take too much thalamid, call your doctor right away. What is the mechanism of action of thalamid, or how does it work? This is an uh, immunomodulating drug. It modulates the immune system. It has effects on angiogenesis, so it's an anti-angiogenesis agent, and it decreases the production of cytokines, which are the substances that tumor needs in order to maintain the blood supply and to get the important substances that it needs for its growth. So it decreases the production of those cytokines. Um, one of those cytokines is VEGF. And uh, it also enhances the ability of immune system to recognize the malignant cells. And uh, it also has direct um, anti-myeloma effects and causes the killing of myeloma cells. What are the common side effects of thalamid? In terms of side effect profile, the most common side effect that we see with thalidomide is fatigue. Some patients can have diarrhea. It can also cause myalgias and joint pain, and it can also cause peripheral neuropathy. So this is a side effect that needs to be monitored and treated. And if the patient is getting quality of life affected because of this side effect, then dose modification of thalidomide is needed. Peripheral neuropathy can be treated with uh, certain medications like gabapentin, and uh, again, if the quality of life is affected, then we may need to decrease the dose of thalidomide. Additionally, suggestions for managing fatigue and other side effects discussed in this video can be found in the Patient Solutions tool of HealthTree Cure Hub. Search on a specific side effect to find solutions that others have found helpful. These solutions have been provided by patients just like you. You can also filter side effects by an individual drug or combination of drugs. When filtering on a combination of drugs, keep in mind it might not always be clear which drug is creating which side effect. This drug is also harmful to unborn fetus, so it is distributed through REMS program. Provider, patient, and pharmacy have to participate in this program and make sure that if the patient is in fertile age group, they are using adequate contraception. The goals of the risk evaluation and mitigation strategy are as follows to prevent the risk of embryo-fetal exposure to thalamid, to inform prescribers, patients, and pharmacists on the serious risks and safe use conditions for thalamid. You can take your mandatory confidential patient survey at CellGeneRiskManagement.com in English or Spanish. Other common side effects of thalamid. Thalidomide also increases the risk of um, having blood clots, especially when in, used in combination with dexamethasone. Patient has to be on adequate prophylaxis for that. Prophylaxis could be antiplatelet agents like aspirin. 
or in some patients who are high risk of developing blood clots, uh, we use anticoagulation like aliquase and lovinox to prevent blood clots. Can you develop a rash from thalamid? One of the most common side effects of AMIDS is rash and itching. So this is a side effect that can scare the patients. Um, rash appears as uh, reddish spots. Um, it can start from your body or it can start on your arms or legs and it can spread. Um, there can be itching associated with a rash. Um, sometimes patients have a rash as bad as full skin involvement. It has something to do with the immunomodulating action of emits. Um, in my patients, I never uh, give up on emits because of rash. If the patient has mild rash, which means that you have some spots on your arms and your body, um, then I add antihistamine drugs like citrazine um, during the daytime or Benadryl at night and able to control the rash. If the rash is severe, which means that it involves most of your body and is itching a lot, then I hold uh, imid a drug for a week or so until the rash improves and add citrazine or Benadryl at night as well as steroids like a um, short course of prednisone. Once the rash improves, I re-challenge with the same drug. I re-challenge with linalidomide or pomalidomide and tell the patient that when you restart your imid molecule drug, um, add citrazine or Benadryl with it and take it together for a few weeks and then uh, see what happens. Some patients develop rash again and I go through the same cycle again. But eventually patients develop tolerance and uh, are able to take the drug without rash. This drug uh, increases the risk of having other malignancies. So it's important that your doctor monitor you for that uh, and get uh, periodic blood work uh, for the monitoring of any other hematological malignancy and you should always get age-appropriate cancer screening. What are the most common secondary primary malignancies or SPMs? Other second malignancies include hematological malignancies. There is increased risk of developing leukemias and MDS, as well as solid tumors like colon cancer and breast cancer. I have patients in my clinic who got all of these. Um, the percentage is small, but this is still something that we need to look for and uh, be careful about. What time of day should you take thalamid? Emit linalidomide or pomalidomide can make you feel fatigued and tired. So I always tell my patients, take it at night before you go to bed. If you are taking steroids with emits, um, you can take steroids during the daytime, early morning, because steroids can interfere with sleep. Celgene Patient Support provides patients with information about the insurance approval process and the financial help that may be available. Programs that may be available to help with the cost of your Celgene medicine differ by the type of insurance you have. Even if you don't have insurance or enough coverage to pay for your medicine, financial help may be available. Fast Track for First Prescription may be available to help eligible patients receive their first prescription faster. You can call a Celgene Patient Support Specialist at 1-800-931-8691 or by visiting their website.